The law is for everyone to follow, and no one is exempted from it, not even lawyers. No matter how intelligent they think they are, karma always gets them. Can attorneys get away with anything? Can they sway a ruling in favor of their clients or even themselves? Watch the video to see how these attorneys get owned by cops for breaking the law. Las Vegas attorney in some trouble for a series of alleged late night rendezvous with one of her clients. Hal Urich, an area criminal defense attorney from Orlando, made headlines all over the country. Hal Urich, who represented George Zimmerman in the Trayvon Martin shooting incident, was arrested on various charges, which included soliciting perjury and tampering with a witness or victim. Marcos Lopez, Osceola County Sheriff, said that Urig took on a case involving a man named Krishnath Persaud, who had been charged of raping a nine-year-old girl. Urig was accused of holding a meeting with his client, the victim, and her father. Urig tried to cut a deal to keep the suspect from going to jail. During their meeting, Urig instructed the victim and her father to do three things. Firstly, to write a declination that is a letter to the state attorney saying that the rape never happened. Particularly a letter to the state attorney saying he didn't, the rape didn't happen. Secondly, to avoid being served a subpoena so that they didn't have to go to court to testify and lastly, to lie during their deposition and say that the rape didn't happen. According to Lopez, he wanted to make sure this guy didn't go to trial for rape. He added that Mr. Persaud committed the sexual battery at a time when she was nine years old. And this is what caused Mr. Rurig to work a deal out with the victim to try and get Mr. Persaud off on a lesser charge so that sexual assault battery cases will go to trial, and this will be a separate trial against the attorney. Even after being pressured to such an extent, the victim decided to come forward and report the conduct to the state attorney's office in July of 2020. One, Osceola County started an investigation against Persaud's attorney on the basis of the victim's complaint. The victim's father engaged in a controlled phone call with Urig and said that he couldn't talk on the phone about any specifics and wanted to meet in person. According to the officials, the father wore a recording device during his meeting with Urig and during the meeting, the attorney made him turn off his cell phone and told the father to read a script off of his computer screen. He wore a recording device, the victim's father. During the meeting, the attorney made him turn off his cell phone. And Lopez said that the script was his defense for when he goes to court on the charges. However, fate had other plans for them. Persaud, who was arrested back in 2019, is working his way through the court system. On the other hand, Urig is accused of soliciting to commit perjury, which is a third-degree felony, and also for tampering with and harassing a victim, which amounts to a capital life felony. Given Urig's 40-year-long career, this might not be the first time he has done something like this. According to Lopez, if you're an attorney, you've been practicing law for a long time, and there's no way you're going to jeopardize your career on something like this, especially at that age. Especially at that age, it's retirement time. So I think this wasn't his first rodeo unless someone else comes forward. We won't know that, but that's what I suspect this time. The next attorney in line is Alexis Plunkett. This topsy-turvy case involves a 38-year-old attorney from Las Vegas named Alexis Plunkett, was indicted with two counts of conspiracy to unlawfully possess a portable communication device and 12 counts of a portable telecommunication device by a prison. The charges relate to her visit with her 28-year-old client and boyfriend at the time named Andrew Arevalo. This man was shot in the face by a high state correction officer in 2014. He also faced felony and weapon charges and was awaiting trial. His case was represented by Plunkett in his lawsuit against the Nevada Department of Corrections in connection with the shooting, which resulted in another man's death. During her visit, security camera footage shows Plunkett handing over her phone to Ervelo. Now this is a felony that could land her in jail for a year. However, her case took a complicated turn, even though the couple started off as boyfriend and girlfriend they were experiencing rifts in their relationship after her phone was examined by the police. It seems that she is trying to put a hit on Aravalo. Her text messages about her joking about felonies led her to her downfall. Some of the texts read, I've placed hits in every Nevada prison on Andrew with every homie and lifer I know. She further added, This pause will never survive in prison now. He's F with the wrong bit. I am not the one. I represent all the sure knows and he's gonna get it. However, one of the people in the group asked her to delete the message. He said, Alexis, this isn't funny. I know you are under a tremendous amount of stress, but I'm not interested in joking about felonies. 
I don't think anyone is either. She replied, I am not joking. That's why I said to delete it. He said he was going to have me murdered, so I'll take care of business first. Plunkett's attorney Adam Solinger said that her messages show that she was under great stress and she was only venting about the bad situation she was in and that her words shouldn't be taken as a serious threat. Despite all of her 14-count indictment, Plunkett was dismissed by the district judge Michael Villani. However, she was shockingly arrested again for charges of bribing or intimidating a witness, which is a felony. According to her lawyer, her guilty plea comes after reaching an agreement with prosecutors. The agreement is a good resolution for all sides involved. It's the choice that she made that's best for her, and I respect that. Ultimately, it came down to being tired of continued litigation. Fighting a war on two fronts takes a toll on you, and remaining in custody pending your trial and resolution of your other case is really hard to do. She pleaded guilty of possession of a telecommunication device and was ordered to serve three years of probation and was later disbarred. In the next case, Christopher Reynolds, a 44-year-old Florida attorney, shocked everyone. He was accused of stealing nearly $800,000 from his clients. He was arrested by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office for multiple charges, including money laundering and grand theft. He started his private practice in Seminole back in 2015 representing victims of vehicle crashes. He had dealt with at least 16 clients before they had their money stolen by Reynolds. It was back in October that the detectives came to know about the theft when one of Reynolds' clients came forward. The client complained to the authorities that her lawsuit for $100,000 had been settled months earlier. However, Reynolds never notified her about this. The investigators made a shocking discovery. Reynolds had forged his client's signature on the legal documents and collected the money from insurance companies that should have been disturbed to pay medical bills and provide other compensation related to car accidents. This was a similar pattern for most of the clients that had availed his services. Once he had settled his case, he would disappear without a trace, never to be seen again. He would neither pick up the calls or respond to the voicemails and would cut off all forms of communication he had with the client's eye. In another incident, the lawyer pocketed the woman's $100,000 and continuously lied to her in the communications before it abruptly stopped that he was going to solve this with the insurance company. He also forged the woman's name on settlement documents, and he never paid her medical bills with the settlement money. His highest theft amounted to $148,750 from a client back in 2019. Sheriff Gaultieri claimed that the clients must have had serious injuries for their settlement money to be in six figures. Now what did he do with the money he stole? The answer will shock you. The lawyer had a drug abuse problem. He used a portion of the stolen money to purchase drugs and nearly spent $30,000 on pornography and $424,000 on prostitution. Sheriff Gaultieri later commented, they're licensed to practice law. They've got the boxes checked. They've got the credentials. They've got the credentials. They've got the credibility that goes with that. And they're really just a thief who was ripping them off. These are not isolated cases. Many lawyers who are corrupted and have been cheating people for years are roaming free in this world with no one to put a check on them. What do you think of these lawyers? Were they punished approximately? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to press the bell icon and subscribe to our channel for future updates.